Welcome to the channel everybody, my name is Mr. Hurricane and it's that time of year again. Madden 20 is now available with EA Access Early Release and I've gotten to play a couple games and today I wanted to give you my first impressions after playing my first couple games of Madden 20. And these games are going to be played inside of franchise mode and right off the bat you can see me trying out this new system where the game will automatically create storylines around certain players and different events. I'm looking forward to uh, diving deeper into those scenarios that can have an impact on player development, experience, their morale. And of course we see Superstar X Factors, a new feature in the game where certain players, the elite of the NFL, have different abilities that help separate them from everybody else. That's one of the biggest differences it looks like here going into Madden 20. But I'm mostly going to focus just on on-field gameplay today. I haven't really gotten deep into franchise to see like contracts, regression, free agency, how it all looks. I'll certainly get there, but right now, just strictly gameplay. And I'm playing these games inside of franchise mode just because there are oftentimes some differences between the play now gameplay and franchise. So I wanted to play where I'll play most of my action. First thing I noticed is that it feels like the kick meter has been slowed down. This is default all pro gameplay. It's what I do right away every year on Madden to see how everything is out of the box on what should be the most ratings based balance setting. This is also on simulation mode as we get into this game Vikings and Bears. I wanted to see how I could play against a defense like Chicago's. But you know what? They got themselves a pretty good running back and there goes Tariq Cohen. Off the juke, he's gone. 65 yard touchdown. That's not something I would normally expect from the CPU, but they had no wasted movements here. Great juke by Tariq Cohen who has some superstar abilities. And after not liking the running back AI for a number of years, that was actually quite refreshing to see. And now we're going to take over on offense and immediately I want to see these RPOs. And I nearly threw a pick six, my first throw in Madden 20, but I didn't. First down instead to Stefan Diggs. The RPOs, there are a few different kinds and you'll have to uh, figure out how they all work as far as the timing and holding the button and how you can use your various options. It's a fun mechanic to get used to. Probably something you'll want to see in the skills trainer. I'm sure that is in there. Now, one of the things that you'll notice that has been talked about quite a bit is that the pass rush is not taking it easy on you this year. That pass rush is cranked up as teams in the NFL are always wary of the best pass rushers on the field and getting the ball out quick is important. And this is not the kind of pass rush you'll be used to seeing on default settings, especially where you have weaknesses. You saw earlier on this possession, I had a lot of trouble running between the tackles. And there's Akeem Hicks there, Eddie Goldman. The Vikings aren't very strong up front. So it's fun to go into these matchups and see if those strengths and weaknesses align. And that area certainly does. But we've gotten down into the red zone now. And Kirk Cousins actually gets a pocket to throw. And that's a touchdown. My first touchdown this year is from Kirk Cousins to Adam Thielen. Now here's the extra point. Tell me, is this not slowing down? I've been playing CPU versus CPU in quarterback games for months now. I haven't actually kicked on Madden in months, but it felt slower than ever. And I'm sure many of you are wondering, will I get back to traditional franchise mode this season? And that's the hope. I don't know yet. I'm gonna play more, do a lot of testing, of course, see what slider sets are created but there are a lot of positive changes here that i think will make the gameplay experience more fun than madden 19 where i simply was just too frustrated and didn't think that i could get good enough gameplay to make the dolphins franchise a great one i do plan on doing a series like my cardinals franchise if you watch that on my second channel and there's some nice coverage there there is a lot of tighter coverage and that'll obviously impact the pass game in multiple ways and that sometimes means the CPU checks down a lot like we saw here early on from Mitchell Trubisky. But I will be doing a rebuild style franchise on my second channel. I have one with over 100 episodes on Madden 19 with the Cardinals. Definitely check that out if you haven't. It's really fun. 
And that's the opposite of what Kirk Cousins is having on this play. Look at the pocket collapse in a hurry there. Khalil Mack gets the sack. He's matched up with second-year tackle Brian O'Neill. And you see those X's under the superstar players. And they're there for a reason. You got to know where these players are. And in this case, you want to avoid them as much as you can. Third and 26. Now we actually get better protection. And this is Adam Thielen, who has some abilities of his own. And he'll get up to the 31. Quarterback AI is always something I look at every year as I don't play head-to-head -head really anymore. And you'll see Trubisky here. It's kind of an awkward play. He's trying to climb. There's nothing open downfield, and the CPU really doesn't like testing those situations if they don't need to. So I'll take over now, and here's an example of a poorly run RPO. I ended up holding the ball too long, didn't make a quick decision, and Pat Elfline was ineligible downfield. By default, I found that penalty is actually turned off. I had to toggle it on so it would be called. I'm sure that'll mess some people up in the beginning as they get used to it, but it is a rule. And here's Cousins downfield on the run. I know it's a very busy HUD, all these prompts and everything, but it's nice here in the evaluation period to see things like that was supposed to be an inaccurate pass and everything and just see the feedback that leads to certain results. So you kind of got to keep your eyes all over the place. The interface gets busier every year on this game. And here's Khalil Mack again around the edge. Normally, this is the kind of pass rush you'll see on all Madden or with lowered pass block sliders. It's nice to see it default like this, and it's something you gotta get used to as Madden hasn't been like this before. There's Trubisky to an open man downfield. It was a little rare to see someone get that open. But now the Bears on the move, and they're gonna get a pass outside now and get close to scoring position. Pass trajectories have been altered this year. You'll notice that mostly on the intermediate throws, and there's a nice one from Trubisky. That was a bullet pass, and that is on target for Allen Robinson, who got a good release here against the press coverage of Xavier Rhodes. And Harrison Smith took a bad angle to cover over the top. So the Bears get their touchdown to pull ahead, and we'll run the ball with Dalvin Cook. I couldn't really feel it as well in this game because the run defense was so good, but the player movement is very smooth. It's one of the biggest leaps forward with this game. Last year, they had uh, whatever they called the uh, technology as far as the real player movement. That's what it was. And then they kind of nerfed it over the year because it really wasn't that good and the CPU couldn't use it. And now, the player movement is much smoother. And running the ball feels pretty good. You can transition from animation to animation and it looks a lot better. And the animations and physics overall seem a lot less awkward. There's a pick, though. Really good coverage by Dion Bush. As I thought I had Thielen there. And now already down seven. I'm in trouble. Bears on the edge of field goal range already. And Cohen. Look how quickly he can get upfield. That's... A lot better AI than we've seen in years for running the football, especially on all pro. Those decisions are quick. You really see Cohen's skill set there on display. Now, I'm not sure why they threw these screens and threw them back to back. I didn't like that play calling. And then Matt Bryant to attempt a kick. And from what I've seen so far, I don't think there's any added drama on kicks. I would like a whole lot more of it. Preferably in Madden, not uh, with my Vikings. But now 17-7. That's off the mark from Cousins intended for Diggs. That was impacted by the pressure. And on second and 10, more rush from Mack. He's not finished. And when you have a mismatch like that, him against Brian O'Neill, it's not going to end well. Third and 17, Dalvin Cook. A little juke there. The moves seem more subtle and realistic and not so drawn out. So that's a nice improvement. Deep ball now intended for Diggs. Overthrown by Cousins. And that's it for my first game here. Default all pro. Lost 17-7 to in a short game. It was definitely tough to run on this Bears defense. So I threw it most of the time and had to deal with a lot of pressure. Of course, with Diggs and Thielen, they gave me a ton of open looks. So I obviously want to play with 
less elite receiving cores and see if it's as easy to complete passes at a high rate. Nine catches overall for Diggs and Thielen in this one. And of course, Brian O'Neill, four sacks allowed, but there were ways I could have gone about avoiding that pressure and play calling would help out there as well. And after the game, of course, I didn't really throw it to Laquan Treadwell, so he basically shows a lack of confidence in his own skill set here, and that resulted in him losing morale, I think, down to 46. It looks to me like they took confidence, a system that was in the game, renamed it morale, and added new things that affect it, but I think it'll be about the same, where really good morale will do, like, plus two, overall plus three overall and really bad will be the inverse of that so it'll have some effects and now we're going to get into another game and this time i'll be controlling the dallas cowboys and amari cooper wants the ball and i'll say okay i will give you the ball amari even though you chose not to come to my bears in chicago you made a horrible decision going to cleveland we're not going to talk about it anymore and then when you face Superstar X Factors, oftentimes you'll get these scenarios that give you kind of an idea or a goal as to how you can work around them. And in this case, we're up against Aaron Rodgers, and we're trying to hold their offense to less than 250 passing yards. So let's play against Rodgers. I played against Brady in the beta, and wow, he was good. How about Rodgers? Under pressure and off the mark. We got Demarcus Lawrence, who is a superstar X Factor at end. And around the edge again. Another pressure from Lawrence as Williams is shaken up. And then on third and seven, three straight reps. And you might say, okay, that's a little ridiculous. Well, I want you to see the skill gap here. Demarcus Lawrence, elite pass rusher, Jason Spriggs. 62 overall, 66 pass block finesse. They did make the overall gaps greater. So now there are some players who are in like the 50s and 60s for overall. And this is a huge mismatch. And we took advantage of it on that possession. So now Dallas's offense with a much better offensive line. How would the experience change? Packers are still strong up front. But immediately, I could see I had some running lanes here with Ezekiel Elliott, and I got a better feel for the running game. And cutting, changing direction, it feels really good. Here's another overthrow. I did see some of these from Cousins and Dak Prescott, two quarterbacks who don't have elite accuracy. I think they definitely wanted to tone down what you can do on the run because that's always been kind of OP. And here's a look at a contract that got done here in season. And they've definitely adjusted that for quarterbacks as Prescott's signing bonus is greater than the salary. And it creates a ton of guaranteed money. And there was a nice run from Ezekiel Elliott. The running game, I think, really does look good. And now with some time to throw, how about that pocket? And the open man, Cooper, he lost it. All right, Packers take over off the takeaway. And obviously, I wanted to get Cooper some touchdowns and yards in here, so that obviously hurts the goal progress. And now Rodgers with a pass outside. We've seen them put in some new animations this year, signature throwing animations. I think the ones for Rodgers look really good, and it's a very, very quick release. One thing you'll notice here in this game in particular too many face mask calls. They're quite common in certain instances. I tend to see them when I'm like trying to use a move near a player and they're able to keep me from spinning or juking and they do it via face mask. Not sure if it's because I'm trying moves, but it's just something I noticed. But I also noticed we got a lot of pressure here on Aaron Rodgers. I kind of wanted to play with the worst pass rush, so I should have played with a different team. But we make it a third and 21 here. And Rodgers in trouble again, isn't going anywhere. So really, I couldn't see what Rodgers was all about with how good this pass rush was. So already inside two minutes in the first half, nice floater out here. Just a nice, smooth, quick play for Ezekiel Elliott. And now up to the 48 of Green Bay. A quick throw and nearly jump for a pick by Jair Alexander. Here's a punt. Just kidding, wanted to test the fakes. Jamiz Olawale, nope, can't get there, sadly. 
So Green Bay's got a little time here. Empty look for Rodgers. Lawrence with the pressure. And the pass is intercepted. Heavy pressure caused it. And there's really nothing Spriggs could do here. These mismatches result in a lot of wins for those pass rushers. Here's one of the new Hail Mary plays. Everybody gets to the middle of the field, but getting the time to throw it might be a little bit difficult there as Prescott is sacked. So let's take it into the second half, see if anything changes. Rodgers chased. He gets it dumped off. I do think that the CPU has better AI against the pass rush this year. Not so much like scrambling and really doing nothing with the ball at all, just drifting back. I didn't see the drifting back and taking a 14-yard sack or anything. Maybe I'll see it if I play more, not sure. And now we'll take over. Option feels pretty good. Prescott gets a first. And then a quick slant. That's on target for Amari Cooper. Obviously, here we have the superstar X-Factors, and there are different things you can do to unlock those special abilities. And there's one for Ezekiel Elliott where I think that, like, the first move will be a guaranteed fake-out. But to get there, you have to get 10-plus yard runs. And in these short games, I think I only saw one player get in the zone, and that was Khalil Mack. And I quickly got him out of it by gaining a first down. We're going for it all on this one, overthrowing Michael Gallup. So both of those deep balls I attempted, one with Dak, one with Cousins, they were both missed. And more rush here on Rodgers. Just no escaping this pass rush. I don't know if they're going to nerf it or anything. I hope if they do anything, maybe it's just less wins right off the snap instant victories like that but this system is meant to help players stand out more and that combined with superstar x factors and that kind of thing i do think it's doing the job of making these stars separate themselves from everybody else rogers on the money for a touchdown that one was a little weird i think we should have been able to knock that one away quite easily but now it's a 7-3 game, and I'm trying to come back here in the final minutes. We'll start a quick cut. Had to redirect Ezekiel Elliott for a couple. A lot more rushing success in this game than in the one with Minnesota. That's caught by Jason Witten. And here's just something I noticed from the pass blocking. I really liked how we didn't just have players standing around. Two players there quickly identified there was no one in front of them, so they helped double team. Here's Elliott running now. Another cut to the right side. We'll pick up a first down. And now up to the 40. Stepping through. Dak outside on the comeback route. Amari Cooper for the first. Trying to get down the field. And now we go underneath. Cooper inside the 20. Now we go to the I formation. Elliott gets the call. Good run again inside the 15. Time winding down here in the process. And a quick slant for Amari Cooper. Now we just got to get this in the end zone. I haven't left us a ton of time. I'm trying to go RPO. I thought it'd be a great idea. Totally did not work. So now second and goal from the five. This time, I want to go to Cooper, who's open. But for some reason, he and Prescott were not on the same page. So third and goal. Dak up top. Oh, badly missed Jason Witten. So this is all coming down to fourth and goal. Second game, Madden 20. Trying to walk off winners here with the Cowboys. Prescott to the end zone. And there it is with zeros on the clock. Touchdown Amari Cooper. But sadly, there's no exciting celebration or anything. It's a last-second touchdown. All we do is come out, kick an extra point into the tunnel, and then it's just kind of a standard finish. And that's something we've seen now for many years. I really didn't see anything on the presentation front that I thought was improved, and that's disappointing. I do care about presentation obviously gameplay is more important and there were some good improvements there so overall i'd say my first impressions from madden 20 are that i like where things are headed from a balance standpoint default 
I like that pass rush is getting better. I think that the player movement overall has improved significantly. The AI of the CPU for quarterbacks and ball carriers does seem improved. There was a lot to like, and I think with sliders, it can be even better. I'm hoping that can be on all pro and all Madden won't be necessary. I really don't like playing all Madden any longer. There's still a lot of things I'd like to see, like a revamped slider system and different sliders for franchise mode to handle pretty much everything like you see in 2K. But there were some positives here. I think the things they changed did change for the better. So I'm hoping that I can do more stuff on Madden 20 this year and have more fun with these series. I love playing franchise mode, and I do think that Madden 20 is a better game to do this stuff on than Madden 19. So with that being said, I'll be playing a lot more of course. I'll have some different videos coming your way showing off franchise mode and what has changed in that side of the game. I won't be doing ultimate team or any head-to-head -head stuff. I just play franchise and nothing else anymore. But let me know what you think if you've had a chance to play the game. Let me know what you thought of the video and please leave a like, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys with more content soon. Have a great day.